okay guys so let's quickly start with the questions uh, so i'm sure all of you would have done uh, great in your exams so So this time, uh, I think NICT question was uh, uh, in pathology. It was uh, it was quite simple, and I'm sure all of you would have seen my uh, tentative or uh, 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 guess questions, which I had posted over the past two days. And I'm happy to uh, you know hear uh, from you all that many questions came from that uh, PDF and uh, Instagram and uh, the uh, Telegram groups, the images that I posted. Thank you so much for all that, and I'm so happy. Order of draw came. I'm so happy. Aspergillus came. Muca came. I'm so happy. Uh, the immunofluorescence came. So, uh, and I'm so happy. Uh, the electron microscopy of hairy cell leukemia came. So, thank you to, uh, so much, guys, for you uh, for giving me. And uh, you know, uh, it has been a great journey. Hope to see you all uh, at AIM soon. So, let's go to the question number one on the screen. Huh? Anti apoptotic. So, which was anti apoptotic marker? Quick guys, so this is uh, all of you know that uh, BAD uh, and Puma are the sensors, so they are pro apoptotic. Back back channel is a pro apoptotic channel, so definitely MCL one and MCL two are anti apoptotic molecules. So the answer to this question was pretty simple here. It is MCL one. Okay, so uh, just a sec. See. So the answer to this question was MCL one. Going to the second portion. Just screen is some issue with my screen. Okay, right. So let's go to the question again. Right. So coming to the question number two, which is true for necrosis. All of you know, whenever we are talking, what is true for necrosis? What happens in necrosis is that your cell membrane swelling occurs, the membrane ruptures occurs, and it incites inflammation. So that's true. So cell membrane swelling. Okay. Okay, so cell membrane swelling occurs, membrane rupture occurs, and it incites inflammation. So all these are true. It's the multiple choice answer. So I'm sure all of you will be able to over uh, able to answer the question correctly. Right. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay. Question number three. So colon tumor was integrated with surgical. Okay. So to make a diagnosis of colon cancer, what do you need? Everybody knows this that we we all will be needing a colonoscopy. We all will be needing a Uh, CECT and CEA. So, okay, CEA ninety nine is not used. This is basically a marker for pancreas. Okay, so this is a marker for pancreas. The other options were correct. So this is A, B, and C. Right. Good. Let's go to the next question here. Okay. So when we go to the next question, so next question was blood banking. Uh, so you have to tell me the storage timing, guys. Okay. So if you look at the storage timing here, guys. What was it? So FFP, FFP, uh, guys, you have to remember the time here was wrong. Okay, so here the timing that was kept for two to three years, it's wrong. It is kept only for one year. Okay, platelet is twenty to twenty four degree. That is room temperature for five days. That's correct. Cryo, uh, the again the year duration was given more. Okay, so this is also wrong. And uh, RPC forty two days was correct. It can be kept in forty two days in sagam, but the temperature has to be from. One to five degree centigrade. Okay, so it is not minus fifteen, five uh, to fifteen. That's wrong. So the answer to this is platelets, right? Okay. So this is your platelet, twenty to twenty four hours for five days. That's the correct answer here. Okay. So today we are just going to discuss the answers quickly so that it is a quick recall. And uh, 
is no much wastage of time detailed discussion will do it later so what is true for brca okay again it was a multiple choice answer so yes so everybody knows that it is a tumor suppressor gene that's correct it is associated with fantani correct it is associated with ovarian correct it is usually not associated with colon cancer so option a b and c are true right okay let's go to the next question here so what is the order of draw so guys i have posted a video day before yesterday and i'm sure all of you would have remembered and seen that and i told you the code also that you have to remember for this remember the code okay that is very very important i told you c c s h e okay so that is first is always culture then it is citrate which is blue then it is serum which can be uh, red or yellow and then it is heparin which is green and then it is edd and the last one is f that is fluoride i told you if something comes in last that's fail fail is the last option that is fluoride okay so that is the option that you all have to remember okay right perfect yeah right guys let's go to the next question so this also i had posted yesterday if you guys have seen the post that i posted yesterday so this is typically uh, so some people told me it's speckled came some people told me this was the image if this was the image guys this is a centromere pattern okay so this is not speckled this is centromere okay so you can see that bright dots coming in the center that these are centromere speckled is very very small it's like dust particles spread all over so speckled is uh, you know fluorescence which is most commonly seen because it's most non specific okay so here you can see discrete dots which are coming so it's a centromeric pattern okay so doesn't look like that okay right okay so that was your uh, centromere it's not speckled okay so if this is not speckled this is centromere speckled is like i had posted a image on the stories of the instagram yesterday you can go and see both the images i've just not put them together so speckled is just centromere uh, spe speckled is like dust particles small 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 dots all over this is definitely a discrete centromeres which are getting highlighted okay guys right uh am i audible guys yeah right so if there is anywhere where the video gets stuck please let me know guys so this is about uh, iron deficiency okay is the presentation moving yeah okay so multiple options true about iron deficiency guys i have always told you a story on iron deficiency and i have always told you iron deficiency is like a beggar okay who is a true beggar who doesn't have food to eat so everything is low only thing is he has high capacity to have food so he is searching for food everywhere his capacity for food is increased definitely so remember whenever we talk about iron deficiency so ferritin is reduced iron is reduced even when there is no iron there will be no transferrin saturation but because he is a very very you know hungry beggar okay so definitely he is searching for food everywhere so your tibc levels are very very high so that is also true so all the options that are given here are true i think it was a multiple choice answer so you have to remember and this is what distinguish anemia of chronic disease or anemia of inflammation from iron deficiency remember anemia of inflammation is a rich beggar who has no desire of earning or eating food so his tibc is a very very low we ask come to iron deficiency he is a true beggar whose whose capacity is to increase uh, eat food is very high so that is why his tibc is a very high okay so let's go to the next question now okay so this is an image okay so i had posted this image uh, i think on the telegram quiz a few time a few days back so this is typical hairy cell guys so whenever there was a hemat quiz this is one of my favorite electron microscopy image you can see these hairy projections which are coming out okay so that's a very very typical electron microscopy of hairy cell okay gotchas will not be like that gotchas will be like something like this it will have lot of you know membranes inside so it will not be like this okay so uh, definitely uh, this image is of your hairy cell gotcha's image i had posted on my uh, youtube record with the revision session short uh, inict revision session uh, on my youtube channel where i had posted gotcha so if you know that you know that this is a hairy projection this is definitely hairy cells guys okay let's go to the next arrange the steps in career diving this was a tricky question and i didn't expect this question to be asked for undergraduates definitely but uh, uh, it, they asked this question right okay so if you look at this uh, okay right 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 okay 
So if you look at this uh, question, guys, uh, just a second. Yeah. So this was your steps in karyotyping, which was asked to you. And this was a question which I didn't expect it, uh, for undergraduates. So remember, what do you do in uh, karyotyping? I'll just tell you quickly. So you take a sample first in heparin. That's correct. After taking in heparin, now you have to put it in the uh, carbon dioxide incubator for approximately three days. Okay. So this is carbon dioxide incubator. That is step number two. Okay, where where you keep it okay so that you know this one incubation only after that after that you will add colchicin so step number three is that you add colchicin okay after this you will centrifuge and after centrifugation uh, multiple steps of centrifugation you will create a cell colonies that is number four and the last step is staining with the gene sand so that's the array that's the order that's the step for karyotyping that you have to remember right so first heparin incubate in carbon dioxide the incubator then colchicin then colonies and then ginsa that's the order okay now this was another question which was a very easy question basically if you apply your logic dna sequence alteration can be seen any technique which can see dna can see the dna sequence alteration okay so sanger is a pcr uh, it's a pcr technique which is which is based upon you know uh, ddnps you add ddnps and stop the process so if you can see any sequence alteration restrain fragment length polymorphism again any insertion or deletion or single nucleotide polymorphism creates a restriction site which can be identified on your uh, rflp methodology so it also uh, identify your sequence alteration fish definitely it is seen to mean uh, uh, see the genes whether there is a deletion whether there is a fusion whether there is a so you use fusion probes you use break apart probes to study if any uh, you know any translocation is there or any deletion is there or uh, amplification is there so any dna alterations can be seen by any of these three flow cytometry usually do not study dna sequence alterations okay so usually flow cytometry is meant to study the proteins okay so it sees the antigens antibodies not the genes okay so of course it was a multiple choice option again so sanger rflp fish all of a dna sequence alteration flow is not for this okay right let's go to the next question guys okay so thymus gland forms a protein which regulates the function of t lymphocytes so guys all of you know this is nothing but they, what are they going to ask is central tolerance so which is the gene which gives central tolerance and all of you know this is ir gene okay so this is an autoimmune regulator gene which uh, which kills all the self reacting t lymphocytes so this is this is a type of central tolerance which occurs in thymus okay so that was ir right now clue cells so this is a very very simple question again what is a clue cell it is a very scoring question all of you know clue cells are nothing but uh, they are your epithelial cells on which the bacilli are stuck and all the margins of the epithelial cells are stuck with the uh, coco bacilli so definitely it is an epithelial cell where the uh, coco bacilli are stuck to it okay so that is your yes uh, that is your this okay okay so actually even if pyro sequencing is there it is also a method of dna technology only dna sequence alteration only which you can be seeing it okay uh, so pyro sequencing depends upon the pyrophosphate groups okay so it's basically it gives light signaling when a pyrophosphate group is incorporated so fine that also it, it can even identify very small changes in, or even in a, a sample which are contaminated samples you can see dna sequence alterations in pyro sequencing so whatever is it the simple of the logic of that dna question was to just identify you, do you know which is the technique for proteins and which is the technique for dna that was a simple logic of that question okay guys okay as a as a undergraduate they do not expect you to know too much they just want you to know basic things that's it okay right okay so that was clue cell which is pretty simple uh, okay sri y, uh, y gene so you uh, this was uh, if you have seen the image you will not forget it short arm of chromosome number y okay so uh, so remember sri uh, region is typically present on the short arm of y so this is uh, this was just a one liner question so if you have seen this you will not forget it sry is present on the short arm and name itself says short arm of y short arm of y okay so if you have seen it always if you have learned this by trick you will never forget it it's short arm of y okay that is this r y g right let's go to the next question here so match the following this was this is one of the uh, so this time in uh, this time i felt dynasty didn't had much pyq questions uh, they have a lot of new questions of also but this is a pyq okay i am sure all of you would have answered this, this is a, a, a previous year asked question and it has been asked so many times you all know 
captain is described in gold workers that's correct mesothelioma can be associated with pleural effusion silicosis usually give you crazy pavement and asbestosis usually lower lobe is involved so i am sure all of you would have marked it correctly it was matched the following i just kept the random options so kaplan is cold worker mesothelioma pleural effusion silicosis crazy pavement and asbestosis lower lobes right okay this was pyq i am sure all of you would have done it right okay this is also a pyq and i'm sure all of you would have done it correct only so once you see smart cells on the uh, peripheral smear what are you going to do you know once you have smart cell this is probably cll and you have to do a flow cytometry to see if these cells are cd5 and cd23 positive if they are 5 and 23 positive your diagnosis will be cll and you can go ahead so that is perfect once you see smart cells lymphadenopathy you have to go ahead and do uh, your flow cytometry okay guys let's go to the next question so patient is on dialysis which type of amyloid so there were three questions on amyloid guys so patient on dialysis all of you know i told you the story also for this so beta 2 microglobulin is a big protein can't pass pass through dialysis filter so the amyloid which gets deposited here is a beta 2 so full name is a beta 2 microglobulin okay so that's the amyloid which is deposited here so that is a simple thing yeah okay next what the next so this was a pedigree with somebody has sent me and uh, they basically asked what is the um, uh, what is the uh, uh, inheritance pattern so guys if you look at this pedigree this is a very typical thing that you see what is this that more than 50% of the generation is involved here so if you look at this the 50% generations are basically involved here so what is happening is uh, okay so even though all the generations are involved this is like something like autosomal dominant pedigree okay but Uh, so so you can say that this might be my autosomal dominant pedigree why not all the generations are involved yes more than 50% of the uh, every uh, generation has the disease perfect so there was another option which was given here is pseudo dominant okay so what happens in pseudo dominant inheritances that this occurs because of recessive alleles but Uh, more than fifty percent of the alleles are affected. So normally, in autosomal recessive, what is going to happen is only twenty five percent of the uh, progeny is going to get the disease. Okay, but what happens is this is auto auto so this is a pseudo dominant. That means it is actually a recessive inheritance, but it is behaving in a dominant manner. So this is what is called a pseudo dominant inheritance. Okay, so what happens here is so usually, uh, usually they what they should have done is they should have kept this. They should have shown you this as a recessive uh, partner. So whenever a uh, one of the partner is a, having a disease okay so you do not know that this is probably due to autosomal dominant disease or this is due to autosomal recessive inheritance you don't know that okay so you suspect that this patient is having disease either both the alleles are recessive and that is why the patient is expressing or this has a dominant disease right now if uh, we are talking that this person has a recessive allele and if i if both are recessive and if the partner is also inherited in a recessive manner and 50% of the progeny is involved then this is a pseudo dominant inheritance then it, this is the pseudo dominant inheritance okay this partner does not have the disease because he is a recessive allele and he uh, because it's a recessive allele and it's not expressing the disease but if it is only a recessive inheritance 25% of the generation should be affected but because 50% of the generation is getting affected here this is basically behaving in a pseudo dominant pattern okay right everybody clear with that so this is what is called as a pseudo dominant inheritance again if you look at this here always the catch is 50% of the progeny should be affected so this is the affected parent and 50% of the progeny is affected again here is a parent and 50% of the progeny is affected here is the parent and 50% of the progeny is affected so this type of inheritance no where 50% of the progeny is getting affected might be a pseudo dominant inheritance yes somebody might ask you ma'am it can can it be a dominant inheritance also yes it can be a dominant inheritance also but this pattern that only 50% of the progeny is getting affected every time doesn't hold very true with this it is very difficult to differentiate pseudo dominant from the dominant inheritance and for that you have to do haplotype analysis okay which is a genetic testing that is what you have to do okay so that is why the possibility of this being pseudo dominant is more than dominant okay so i don't say that this is cannot be a dominant inheritance it can be but because that 50% of the progeny is coming every time and if this was the exact pedigree that was given then i will give pseudo dominant as a more probable option to dominant right okay right so that is your pedigree question let's come to the next 
So complications of TACO. This is just a complication of massive transfusion, guys. All of you know that. Okay, so hypocalcemia usually, uh, hypocalcemia doesn't occur usually, right? Elderly patient presenting, again, that was a repeat question, okay? So this was also uh, uh, elderly diabetic patient with the immunosuppressive state showing uh, oval budding yeasts. And whenever you, you, you see this one line, pseudo hyphae. So budding yeast with pseudo hyphae. This is nothing but candida. So apart from this, they were also fungus option. They will also septate and aseptate fungus, which was asked, which I had also asked you, given you as an image. So they were septate. Uh, septate, acute angle branching was your aspergillus. You know that. And aseptate, okay, 90 angle branching was your mucor. Okay, so these were also questions that came. So I just uh, put them together. CD40 is absent on the cell. What is What will not happen? Guys, you remember CD40 ligand is present on the T cells and CD40 receptor is present on the B cells. And this signal is called as competent signal. Okay, so what is the signal called as? This is called as competent signal because only after this signal, only after you get sig this signal, the IgM antibodies further change into all the other types of antibodies that is G, A and D. So this is called class switching. So if this signal doesn't happen, class switching doesn't happen. And this is one of the major, major pathogenetic mechanism behind hyper IgM syndrome. And there was also a flow cytometry question on hyper IgM syndrome, which was a repeat PYQ, which was asked and we have discussed it so many times. So this was just an altered way of giving you a PYQ. Again, this was a PYQ. So what will not happen if CD40 is absent? Obviously, class switching is not going to happen. Let's go to the next question, guys. So on light microscopy, a pic was given and this is the pic that was given probably. Okay, and this uh, pic had some, this uh, deposit, this color, this color is a very typical color. Always remember that orangish red color is also called as salmon red color. Okay, so this color is very, very typical for amyloid. Never ever forget it. Okay, so that was amyloid, which gives you this. Okay, right. Okay. Okay, Satvik. So Satvik is saying rhinosporidia was also given. Okay, so rhinosporidia also I have posted a, a, a image on the uh, uh, image on the uh, uh, Instagram. It shows you just a spherules with small, 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 small uh, dots, many small, 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 small dots inside. That's a very typical image of rhinosporidia. Okay, so it has a big, big round circles, and that small, 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 small circles will be given. That's a very typical image for rhinosporidia, which all of you should be knowing. Okay. Right. Uh, I think that will be discussed in ENT uh, by Dr. Rajin. Right. Okay. So what is the most common cause of hypercoagulability? So whenever we uh, talk about most common cause of hypercoagulability, so this is one of my favorite questions. So most common cause of hypercoagulability is always factor V leading mutation. And for this also, I have told you story so many times, you know, uh, a young person presenting suddenly with stroke, always think of factor V laden mutation. This is one of the most common cause of hypercoagulability in our country. Okay. In our country, also in world also. Okay. That's one of the most common cause of hypercoagulability. Okay. So factor V becomes resistant. Okay. Uh, to break down by protein C. That is what is happening in factor V laden mutation. This is also called as activated protein C resistance. So uh, factor V is resistant to protein C. So it is not. Uh, so it's not broken down. So this excess factor type causes hypercoagulability, right? This also is a very simple question. Okay, so here this uh, the, it was given a linear immunofluorescence. Whenever they give you a linear immunofluorescence, okay, this is very very typical of bullous pemphigoid. You know any pemphigus, any pemphigus will give you a fishnet pattern, and dermatitis subtiformis only the tips will be uh, showing you the pattern, and usually that is IgA. So bullous pemphigoid is typical linear pattern, right? So there was one more question on amyloid. Sorry, I couldn't get all the options here, guys. I just got that it is deposited extracellularly. That's true. Okay, so it's like deposited extracellularly. That's true. Uh, this named so because it's similar to amylase. That is starch. That's true. It is beta pleated. Yes, that's also true because it's an abnormal shaped protein. So it was, I think, multiple uh, choice answers. And all these options which I got were true. Right. Okay. Right, guys. Uh, so next question was in which uh, in which case you can give vaccine. Okay, so uh, remember, guys, vaccines can be given in cases of Viscott Aldrich syndrome and ataxia telangiectasia. You cannot give live vaccine to Dijon syndrome. Okay, you cannot give live vaccines to Dijon syndrome. Ataxia telangiectasia and Viscott Aldrich syndrome are the cases in which you can give vaccine. Okay, 
So that was the end of it. That was 29. And the 30th question was Jack Stat pathway is involved in which hormone? Hormone? It's leptin. It's involved in leptin. Leptin is the hormone which uh, is in, which shows you Jack Stat pathway uh, involvement, right? So that were the questions that I got, guys. So 30 questions overall in path. Uh, some of them are PYQ. Some of them were newly asked questions, but they were quite scoring. And I'm sure uh, path would help would have helped you to score. Uh, well so all the very best guys seeing off goodbye